Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah. Our project is the response yeah. aircraft for Precise International Draw, part of the SAE Aero Design Competition. I'm Alexander Gibson. Yeah. And you are Joe. I'm Rick Lovell. And our advisor is Dr. Andres Cromante. So the background is, SAE is an international organization that does a lot of standardizations for a lot of engineering, and they also do some competitions for students to test the engineering <coughs> prowess. FIU has competed in the SAE Aero Regular class for the past two years and is returning this year with the additional micro class. The uh, advanced competition is supposed to simulate a humanitarian aid drop on a target zone. The competition itself is uh, has a, it's a pretty open design with um, only a few design requirements that are necessary, a 55 pound limit based off the FAA, and to make it a competitive atmosphere, the uh, SAE has decided to use a 0.46 cubic inch maximum displacement for the engines. The rule set says that there needs to be a static and dynamic payload for the scoring system. The baseline is for the static payload, and the dynamic payload is for the actual multiplier in the drop zone. So the aircraft will have to take off, fly up to 100 feet, and the telemetry system will dictate when it's at 100 feet, and then we'll drop a dynamic pillow on a target zone that will allow us to do the multiplication for the actual scoring system. So we'll have to have data acquisition, telemetry, and of course the airplane itself. So this is our winning concept design so far. It's a blended wing design, or blended body design with a detail. We chose this for its pure efficiency, the body itself actually helps produce lift, and the detail has a small wetted area to reduce its drag overall in the plane design. All the electron electronics, the droppable dynamic payload system, the motor, and most of the systems are going to be housed in the blue area. The static payload, which is going to be the bulk of the weight of the aircraft, is actually going to be placed inside of the wings to help with the wing loading and stress due to flights. This is our first finalized design. It features a uh, fully sized blended wing, of a uh, wingspan of 12 feet, which features a uh, 40-inch root cord, a 10-inch chip cord. The tail, a uh, fully sized tail, sits 50 inches rearward of the main wing. This uh, was shortened from our concept design due to takeoff considerations. Uh, the tail sits on a single boom. The single boom was chosen for this design due to its decreased weight, thus uh, leading to a less of a moment arm on the tail, on the, tail, on the boom. This is our turner mm -hmm. final design, which is the same blended wing, um, coupled with a twin boom inverted V tail configuration. The, tail, uh, the twin boom offers increased structural stability, especially in the torsion direction. Also, the inverted V uh, fixes or avoids the problem of the adverse roll yaw coupling found in a normal V that produces instead of desirable pulverous roll yaw coupling. This configuration is also intended to be measured with a uh, pusher. Uh, propulsion, which the propulsion system sits on the tail, thus leading to a desirable airflow over the lifting surface body of the, uh, the main wing, producing a little more lift than the previous uh, design. The materials that we use in this aircraft would be uh, most of the components would be out of wood, yellow poplar, balsam birch, uh, metal components such as landing gear, wheels, uh, mounting of the uh, uh, motor, of uh, the propulsion system would be out of lightweight aluminum, and wing and tail. Uh, twin and single boom options would be out of commercial available carbon fiber. Uh, for the electrical and electronic components, we propose the use of two cell 7.4 volts uh, LiPo battery. This battery will power up eight servo motors, uh, one for the throttle control of the RPM of the engine, one for the steering wheel and the landing gear to control the steering of the aircraft during the landing and the takeoff on the runway, two servers on the main wing for the ailerons, uh, two servers for the um, Elevators on the V-tail um, and two servers on for the payload release. This will allow us to use uh, multiple drops per competition rules. Our pilot will be using standard 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio system, and our payload specialist will be using 5.8 gigahertz first person view system. The payload specialist need to see the actual area of the target and press the button to drop the payload. The telemetry will feed us the essential components for the competition. The most important are the speed of the aircraft, the altitude needs to be 100 feet as a requirement, the position of the aircraft, and uh, that's it. Uh, we, we also would like to use. So for the base analysis we've done, uh, starting analysis was, um, was used, we use XLFR5. 
XFLR5 is uh, designed as an analysis tool used for RC and low burnout aircraft. It allows us to do quick iterations of different design parameters, such as wing shape, wing shape, wing size, different airflow selections between the wing. It outputs different performance values like CL, CD, CL with CD, wing efficient and lift and drag, lift and drag colors which compared with the wing. The analysis, the type of analysis we use is a fixed, uh, fixed speed lift analysis, which we fix it at 25 miles an hour uh, for all wing uh, analysis. Um, this allows us to compare uh, very easily different wings and choose the one that has the best performance values. So the one we, this is on the top right is a finalized wing design in XFL5. Following XFL5, we, we had to validate the results of the program. We use a CFD software called Access Fluent. We want to see, we took the output data from XO5 and put that into geometry in X Fluent to check we were worried about any stall effects over the wing at 12 angle of attack, which is a takeoff uh, angle of attack. As you can see from the top left, we had no stall effects over the main body of the wing and the lift of the uh, body. Also on the thing on the right, you can see the eddy, uh, tip, uh, wing tip vertices form, and you can see they're not, uh, they're contained at the wing tip, they don't uh, protrude too much into the wing. So following that, we improved the design by uh, a good transition between the wing, the body and the wing. Also, we raised the wing up, so if you look at the aircraft in front, the top of the wing and the body are on one straight line. This allowed easy, uh, ease of manufacturing as our main structural element within, our main structural element within the aircraft without having these kind of activities or breaks in it. So we ran this uh, this improved design in CFD and found again no stall effects on our takeoff angle and also no uh, our tip our, ver our tip vertices stayed around the same and we found an increase of CL to 1.71 and increase of uh, increase of lift of a uh, pound of the previous design to 52 and a half pounds. All right, to help take all those parameters from CFD and the XFLR5, we developed a MATLAB code that exports a sheet into Excel. And this helps us look at two parameters, one to take off distance because the runways that we're gonna be traveling at are gonna be 400 to 600 feet, and also the minimum flight velocity of the aircraft. And this allows us to have the slowest speed we can over the drop zone so we can try and make a, as accurate prediction as we can. And here you can actually see the takeoff distance in feet. In the vertical direction is temperature of the ambient air, and then the headwind, and then of course in the very top left you can see the weight of the aircraft, that's the gross vehicle weight at the takeoff itself. And so you can, we can do a prediction of how long it would take, so we can do worst case scenarios of how heavy we can actually lift with the vehicle itself. Uh, for the economical aspects of the design, we did a preliminary budget. We have a over two pages uh, expense report. For the simplicity, we divide it into the six different categories you see on this slide. The most expensive are road building materials and uh, tools and outsourcing work. Overall cost of the aircraft we predicted to be $2,400. Uh, the project management of the design, we have a Venn chart where we did uh, in March and February the concept design. Currently we're working on the detailed design, structural analysis, and we already started the CFD analysis. Uh, we would like to finish everything over the summer to start building the actual aircraft uh, in August, starting from the wing, which is the most critical part. Uh, and uh, in September and October, we'll be finishing fuselage tail and installing the electronics and the data acquisition equipment. We would like to uh, do the structural test, uh, the most important part, in October to compare with the structural analysis to see our predictions. Uh, the flight test will be in November and the payload mission test will be in December to present some valuable results to the board. However, the competition itself will be held in April 2018, so we have a lot of time to adjust the design. Uh, the standards in consideration to this design, those are the standards. The most important for our project is ASME and AMA. Uh, for the global awareness, we propose to use both international and British unions to use it in our literature. For the global perspective, we would like to use the industry standards described earlier. And for the global engagement, we propose translation of all the technical literature to the Spanish and Russian languages. All right, going forward, we plan to actually do the entire structural development during the summer, like we said, and then do the FAA analysis both on the ground and in flight so that we can make sure that the plane is perfectly safe. It is a challenging and it's a multidisciplinary project, and we plan to sit there 
and um, make sure that all of us work together to actually get it done in time. And it's going to be a good upstart for the reputation of FIA in the aerospace. We've had a good track record so far, and we want to continue to advance that. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Somewhere I missed how you're going to power this. I oh, at the 0.46 cubic inch, it's a nitro motor. And so they, the requirement says that we can have as many motors as we want. So we can do like two small motors or one large motor. Generally, they're a, a two stroke motor. The ones we're looking at make about one and a quarter horsepower and they run around like 15, 16,000 RPM. So we're looking at like a nine by six propeller. Maybe um, if we want to go more static thrust, we can go for like a, a 10 by five. Also, the previous rules have kind of give us a warning of if the rules are gonna change this uh, next year, and one of the changes could be a change from internal combustion to electric. So we're kind of waiting on that too. So we're kind of an open design now to fit any propulsion that they choose. So the design of the propeller is going to be dependent on how fast this motor goes. Yes. Okay. You get too far out, then you get tip speed becomes a real problem. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that drives also our the height of the aircraft because we don't want to turn propeller on the ground. Yeah, the landing gear height. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> How do you guys plan on uh, adjusting to the different weather conditions? I know that uh, you guys aren't flying with don't know yet where it's going to be held, so there's different. And then when you're flying, I'm assuming you, you said you have to identify like different velocity a little bit. You drop the payload, so. All right, so yeah, what we plan to do is look at all the previous locations like Texas, Lakeland, and stuff like that that we performed at, and then we're gonna do all that MATLAB analysis based off of those parameters. So we'll look at the ones that basically provide the worst case, which is gonna end up being Lakeland because it's a, a hotter environment, and so we actually produce less lift, which means we need a higher minimum velocity. So that's what we're gonna make our baseline. Plus, we're gonna also use more than likely some type of tailwind because the winds have shifted in the previous competition. So we want to include that and that's why in the map that you, you actually saw like a negative two mile per hour uh, headwind because that's actually a two mile per hour tailwind. We wanted to make sure that we could take off in the distance required. And do you guys plan on adjusting to the rules as they come out? Or? Yes. Yeah. That's where uh, this, comp this year's competition is in this weekend. We'll be asking and probing the judges to see how how much they are going to change the rules or what hints do they give us. Uh, the question area that I, I play to is um, flight test, payload, mission testing. We've got that kind of late to me. Uh, I would hope you're done with all of that by November since so you've got the ability to review it and analyze it and then come back and tell us why, if it's not perfect, why it's not perfect. And so that that gets in the report. Yes. And you don't want to wait to December to do that. You want to do that. You want you want to have that data in hand by November. Um, and so, you know, and, 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 so, and really why I even ask about it is that, you know, two pound load on a target, you're going to have to have strategy of how you fly this plane mm -hmm. in order to assure that you get within the best result for the, uh, the payload landing. And so I think that's going to take more time. Okay. Um, and so I know you're, you're working through the summer. That's a great idea. I would suggest you condense that a little bit so that you get yourself some more time to be able to be accurate okay. on, your, on your testing side. Strongly would like to see test results. I want to see, you know, I want to see you do the analytical work and I want to see output that's experimental and connect it to the analytical work. And then they'll present there. And then present. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? <laughs>